Good evening and welcome to Holy Trinity Church. Today we celebrate the third Sunday of Easter. Prior to our celebration of the Eucharist, we would like to, to share a short video. Please direct your attention to the video monitors. Sorry, I'm guessing that's it. Um, Antonietta del Monaco will be especially remembered at this Mass. Our opening hymn will be number 176, Ye Sons and Daughters, found in Breaking Bread. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. My brothers and sisters, it is in fact our baptism that makes us brothers and sisters by making us adopted sons and daughters of the Father through the work of Jesus in the power of the Holy Spirit. And so we give thanks. Lord our God, in your mercy, be present to your people's prayers. And for us to recall the wondrous work of our creation and the still greater work of our redemption, graciously bless this water. For you created water to make the fields fruitful and to refresh and cleanse our bodies. You made water the instrument of your mercy, for through water you freed your people from slavery and quenched their thirst in a desert. Through water the prophets proclaim the new covenant you were to enter upon with the human race, and last of all through water, which Christ made holy in the Jordan, you have renewed our corrupted nature in the bath of regeneration. Therefore, may this water be for us a memorial of the baptism we have received, and grant that we may share in the gladness of our brothers and sisters who at Easter have received their baptism. 
through Christ our Lord. has blessed us this day. All of creation joins us in praise, lifting our voices, lifting our hearts to the glory of God forever. into our presence this day. Strengthen us now with the spirit of faith we gather in your name. The God of all grace has blessed us this day. All of creation joins us in praise, lifting our voices, lifting our hearts to the glory of God forever. May Almighty God cleanse us of our sins and through the celebration of this Eucharist make us worthy to share at the table of his kingdom. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory, Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand, of the Father, have mercy on us, for you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father, glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. Amen. May your people exult forever, O God, in renewed youthfulness of spirit, so that, rejoicing now in the restored glory of our adoption, we may look forward in confident hope to the rejoicing of the day of resurrection. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen.
A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter said to the people, The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, the God of our fathers, has glorified his servant Jesus, whom you handed over and denied in Pilate's presence when he had decided to release him. You denied the Holy and Righteous One and asked that a murderer be released to you. The author of life you put to death. But God raised him from the dead. Of this we are witnesses. Now I know, brothers, that you acted out of ignorance, just as your leaders did. But God has thus brought to fulfillment what he had announced beforehand through the mouth of all the prophets, that his Christ would suffer. Repent, therefore, and be converted, that your sins may be wiped away. The word of the Lord. Let your face shine on us. Lord, let your face shine on us. When I call, answer me, O oh my just God. You who relieve me when I am in distress. Have pity on me and hear my prayer. Lord, let your face shine on us. Know that the Lord does wonders for his faithful one. The Lord will hear me when I call upon him. O oh Lord, let the light of your countenance shine on, on us. You put gladness into my heart. Lord, let your face shine on us. As soon as I lie down, I fall peacefully asleep. For you alone, O oh Lord, bring security to my dwelling. Lord, let your face shine on us. A reading from the first letter of St. John. My children, I am writing this to you so that you may not commit sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the Righteous One. He is expiation for our sins, and not for our sins only, but for those of the whole world. The way we may be sure that we know him is to keep his commandments. Those who say, I know him, but do not keep his commandments are liars, and the truth is not in them. But whoever keeps his word, the love of God is truly perfected in him. The word of the Lord. Oh. Uh. 
Open the scriptures to us. Hallelujah. Make our hearts burn while you speak to us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. The two disciples recounted what had taken place on the way and how Jesus was made known to them in the breaking of the bread. While they were still speaking about this, he stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. But they were startled and terrified and thought that they were seeing a ghost. Then he said to them, Why are you troubled? And why do questions arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet, that it is I myself. Touch me and see, because a ghost does not have flesh and bones, as you can see I have. And as he said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While they were still incredulous for joy and were amazed, he asked them, Have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of baked fish. He took it and ate it in front of them. He said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you that everything written about me in the Law of Moses and in the Prophets and Psalms must be fulfilled. And he opened their minds to understand the Scriptures. And he said to them, Thus it is written that the Christ would suffer and rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance for the forgiveness of sins would be preached in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses to these things. The Gospel of the Lord. I don't remember exactly when the United States invaded the island of Grenada. I think it was 1984. But I know I was at college and I didn't know that the island of Grenada existed, my ignorance, until I saw the signs that said U.S. out of Grenada. And they came out so quickly that I wondered if the students perhaps had signs made already that said U.S. out of and we're ready to fill in a country when one should cross the news. But in any event, I remember not long after that, sitting in the college dining hall with some of my friends, and there was a bit of a debate at the table. And um, some were saying that the United States was imperialist because there it was invading a tiny island that had no business invading. Others were saying 
that the United States was not imperialist, that it was protecting um, the American medical students and others who were threatened with um, some kind of revolution going on in Grenada. And then my friend Paul came and joined the conversation. And as usual for Paul, and he remains this way to this day, he listened a bit, and then he said, do you have a problem if the United States is materialist, is imperialist? Do you have a problem if the United States is imperialist? And he simply brought a completely different perspective to the conversation. It was either the United States was doing something good or they're doing something bad. And Paul kind of said, maybe the United States is doing something good, but maybe it is imperialist. Well, whether Paul was right or wrong, um, and in some ways he says those things because he likes the attention it brings him, but uh, whether he was right or wrong is not the point. But he introduced what we might call a paradigm shift in the conversation. The debate was set along the lines of two positions opposed to each other. And Paul brought in a completely different perspective. And it, Paul, it caused everyone at the table to have to stop and rethink everything, even if they would go back to their original position. Another example with that would be innovation and invention. And uh, as some of you know who were here at Daily Mass this morning, um, I had invited a friend of mine, Father Dennis Spees, who's a priest of the Diocese of Joliet in Illinois and works at Mundelein Seminary. I actually know him from summertime that we both have spent um, ministering at the Institute for Priestly Formation in Omaha in the summers. But I'd invited him to do a morning of recollection for seminarians. And, uh, and he did a wonderful, wonderful job um, with that. And um, he too is one who will see things from a different angle and, and loves to kind of um, undercut assumptions and help people see in a new way. And I think that goes hand in hand with his great love of invention. So yesterday afternoon, um, we went to the Thomas Edison Museum in West Orange. I'd been there years ago. But um, I knew that he would love it because what better inventor can you find than Thomas Edison? And um, so we went there and uh, I, expected, um, I expected him to be learning a lot and, um, and me too because I had forgotten most of what I learned there, I'm sure. And, but as it turned out, really, he became my tour guide. He knew this stuff so well. He loved the museum. He'd never been there. But he knew the stuff so well that everything that we came across that Edison had invented, he had learned something about. And all the machinery that Edison used to um, invent things and, uh, and, and then make them marketable and the like, um, producing them in a you know, mass production way, um, he knew. So again, one who loves to see things from a different angle and we might say that can bring about what could be called a paradigm shift, a new way of thinking. Well, the point of all of that is not about Father Dennis Spee's invention or my friend Paul LaMonica's um, interesting insights into conversations he joins, but what Jesus says to us tonight. You know, and it's, this is not the only place where he says it, but it's so clear here, right? He says, um, these are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses and in the prophets and Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. And he said to them, Thus it is written that the Christ would suffer and rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance for the forgiveness of sins will be preached in his name to all the nations beginning from Jerusalem, your witnesses of these things. That the Christ, the Messiah, the Savior would suffer, not the way most people expected, expected it to be, 
Although we know from our readings um, in Holy Week and Palm Sunday and Good Friday and, and the weekdays of Holy Week too, from the suffering servant songs of the prophet Isaiah, that what Jesus said was not without precedent in the scriptures. But people were expecting a victorious um, Messiah. And, um, and we expect, I think, to enjoy life as much as possible in a good way, right? Uh, we're not hedonists, but we expect to enjoy life in a good way as much as possible and to avoid pain. And so we might live in a moderated pleasure pain principle in some ways. But is that really what Jesus says? Because the disciples operated in the, with those assumptions too. But Jesus speaks about the Messiah necessarily suffering. And of course we share, right, in his life. It's the great gift of baptism that we're brought into the life of Christ. And we live in this intimate communion whereby he really is living our life. We're so immersed in him that it's his words, his actions that show in our life. I know we don't always pay close attention to that. We don't always give him a lot of room to do that. But that's what the intimacy of baptism has so much to do with. And it has so much to do with sharing in his death and resurrection. Are you not aware, Paul asks, that we who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? And Paul goes on to say that if we have shared a death like his, so shall we share a like resurrection. And that reading has assumed such importance for the Christian people, really since the third century, since the 200s, that we include it as the New Testament reading in the Easter Vigil, the highlight of our liturgical year. So there's an invitation here. If I walk along with a gentle pleasure pain principle, life is about basically enjoying things and about avoiding and being spared from pain. Jesus invites me tonight to look more deeply. Of course we prefer pleasure to pain. Of course we prefer resurrection to suffering and death. And that is the promise of Jesus, ultimately. But here below, our purpose is not to have a good time, but to love. We know that love entails a share of suffering. We can even take someone like Thomas Edison, who tremendously successful, tremendously famous now and during his lifetime, but who suffered because he worked so hard to accomplish the things that he sought to accomplish. And we admire that. So we're invited really and deeply to love and to accept that as the meaning of life and to trust that whatever ease, whatever pleasure, whatever joy we need along the way, the Lord will provide. But for you and me, our task is to love, to love because we have been loved and we need to share it. I believe 
in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men, for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Confident with Easter hope, let us bring the needs of the world to the Lord. Please respond, risen Lord, hear our prayer. For the church, that the Spirit will open our minds to understand the scriptures, empowering us to share the gospel message with all whom we encounter, we pray. Risen, risen Lord, hear our prayer. For the grace of recognition, that we may come to know Jesus in the breaking of the bread and the sharing of the scriptures so that we may be dynamic disciples, we pray. Risen Lord, hear our prayer. For refugees and immigrants, that God will lead them safely and help them find communities for support and opportunities to use their talents for the good of others, we pray. Risen Lord, hear our prayer. For the spirit of stewardship, that we may make wise use of the resources of the earth and protect the soil, air, and water for future generations, we pray. Risen Lord, hear our prayer. For the seriously ill in our parish community and among our family members and friends, to be gifted with comfort and healing, especially those named in this Sunday's bulletin, we pray. Risen Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who have died, especially James Kororos, Peter McElhaney Sr., and Antoinetta Delmonico, that they may touch Christ and be one with him for all eternity, we pray. Risen Lord, hear our prayer. For the prayers we hold in the silence of our hearts. That God may receive our concerns with kindness, we pray. Risen Lord, hear our prayer. Gracious God, your risen Son fulfills our deepest longings and greatest hopes. Listen to our prayers, refashion and guide us so that we might spread your generous kindness to all. Through Christ our risen Lord. Amen. Our offertory hymn is number 656, Down to the River to Pray, number 656. down to the river to pray, studying about that good old way, and who shall wear the starry crown, good Lord, show me the way. Oh, sisters, let's go down, let 
let's go down, come on down. Oh, sisters, let's go down, down to the river to pray. As I went down to the river to pray, studying about that good old way, and who shall wear the starry crown? Good Lord, show me the way. Oh, brothers, let's go down, let's go down, come on down. Oh, brothers, let's go down, down to the river to As I went down to the river to pray, studying about that good old way, and who shall wear the starry crown? Good Lord, show me the way. Oh, fathers, let's go down, let's go down, come on down. Fathers, let's go down, down to the river to pray. As I went down to the river to pray, studying about that good old way, and who shall wear the starry crown? Good Lord, show me the way. Let's go down, let's go down, come on down. Oh, mothers, let's go down, down to the river to pray. As I went down to the river to pray, studying about that good old way, and who shall wear? The starry crown, good Lord, show me the way. Oh, sinners, let's go down, let's go down, come on down. Oh, sinners, let's go down, down to the river to Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Receive, O Lord, we pray, these offerings of your exultant Church, and as you have given her cause for such gladness, grant also that the gifts we bring may bear fruit in perpetual happiness. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. And lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed. Through him, the children of light rise to eternal life. In the halls of the heavenly kingdom are thrown open to the faithful. For his death is our ransom from death, and in his rising, the life of all has risen. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every people, every land exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic host sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are 
full of your glory. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name Most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Joseph, our Bishop, and the Assistant Bishops, and all those who holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants living among us who are commended to our prayers. And all gathered here, whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, for they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them for the redemption of their souls, in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmos and Damien, and all your saints, we ask that through their merits and prayers, in all things we may be protected by your defending help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of, your, of our service, that of your whole family. Order our days in your peace, and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands. And with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O oh God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have saved. 
Therefore, O oh Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to, and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer we ask you, almighty God, Command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, in all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who those sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen, amen, divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, but not in our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant us peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us turn to one another, both here and in our homes, and gently share a sign of Christ's peace.
of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Grant us Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. I am the door wide open, 
I am the shepherd's might. I am the truth and the light. I am the way and the life. I am who I am and I am for you. Come and follow me. Let us pray. Look with kindness upon your people, O Lord, and grant, we pray, that those who are pleased to renew by eternal mysteries may attain in their flesh the incorruptible glory of the resurrection. Through Christ our Lord. Many people have enjoyed viewing the first three seasons of a very popular series about the life and ministry of Jesus called The Chosen. We will be showing season four on four consecutive Mondays in our parish center beginning this Monday, April 15th. See the bulletin for more details. Join us on Thursday, April 18th at 2 p.m. in the parish center for Dr. Ginger Grancanolo's presentation, How to Stay Grounded in the Midst of Confusion. She's very good, she's my cousin. <laughs> Details are in the bulletin and on our website. On Friday evening, April 19th, from 6 to 9 p.m., Faith Formation is hoping, hosting a family fun night. Come enjoy games and pizza with your youngsters. And today, my brother Knights of Columbus will be here soliciting your support for their Tootsie Roll drive to assist citizens with disabilities. Please be as generous as you are able. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Our recessional hymn is number 415, In Christ Alone, number 415. My light, my strength, my song, this cornerstone, this solid ground, firm through the fiercest drought and storm. What heights of love, what depths of peace, when fears are stilled, when striving cease, my comforter. Here in the love of Christ I stand. In Christ alone, who took on flesh, full 
fullness of God in helpless babe, this gift of love and righteousness, scorned by the ones he came to save, till on that cross, as Jesus died, the wrath of God was satisfied for every sin. On him was laid, here in the dead.